Welcome to Michael Potts F1. Everything Formula One, but from a photographer's point of view. Are you wondering which Formula One race to attend this year? Well, let me inspire you with this A to Z guide of the Dutch Grand Prix. This is, after all, my home race. I'll be looking at why this event should be a top priority for every Formula One fan. We'll look at the history, as well as some advice on where to stay, which tickets to get, and, as always, along the way, I'll show you some of my favorite photographs from the past races. My first Dutch Grand Prix was 2021. The race was won by Max Verstappen as part of his first World Championship win. I managed to get this epic shot of him crossing the line with fireworks and flares and the crowd going completely berserk. Seeing their local hero win the first race at the track since 1985. In doing so, becoming the first Dutch winner of this event. It was a very special day. It did take me about a week to get the orange out of my hair and lungs. Located just outside Amsterdam, the Dutch have been holding motor racing events at the seaside town of Zandvoort since the 1930s. During World War II, this area was occupied by the Nazis, and they built a very straight road through the dunes for victory parades. This road was then connected to some other coastal defence roads by members of the Royal Dutch Motorcycle Association, and in 1950 it held its first Grand Prix. It was not part of the inaugural F1 Championship, but it was a non-championship event meaning Louis Rosser didn't gain any points for winning the race. It wasn't until the 1952 championship that the Dutch Grand Prix status was upgraded to full championship race. Alberto Ascari won that and most of the other races in that year driving a Ferrari. Despite missing three seasons in the 1950s due to financial concerns, and once in 1972 where the drivers boycotted due to safety concerns, the race in the Dutch dunes was a staple until 1985. There have been some absolute classic races. In 1975, James Hunt got a brilliant victory for small privateer Hesketh Racing. Hunt made the bold decision to switch to slick tyres on a damp track. He then held off a charging louder. In 1985, Lowry came from 10th place to win a dramatic race from his teammate, Alan Prost, by two tenths of a second. It was Lauda's last Grand Prix victory and the last race to be held at Zunfort until 2021. The two races since we've had since his return haven't been classics from a racing point of view. However, it is an incredible track to watch Formula 1 cars at their limit. Let's have a look at the new track layout. We head down the main straight to the first and possibly the finest named corner in Formula 1, Tarzan. This is where drivers can let it all hang out. There is a bit of a debate as to how it got its name. Either it's a nod to the popular movie Tarzan and the Apes, or it's the name of one of the machines used to lay the tarmac of the track. Or, alternatively, it could have been the nickname of one of the locals whose land became part of the circuit. From here, the drivers head to the steep banking section at Turn 3, or Hugenholtzbosch. Named after the former circuit director, this must be the steepest banking section in all of Formula 1. From here, the cars go through a thrilling section of corners, giving the track a roller coaster feel. Then, there's the epic stadium section, before the drivers tackle the final fast banked corner that leads to the start-finish straight. The current circuit layout is very different to the much larger circuit that used to be here. This new layout is much smaller and more compact, making it a lot easier to get around. I don't think we've yet had a classic race since we've returned to this venue. However, the crowd does make it one of the best races to watch. Dive into a sea of orange is one of the event's slogans. And the stadium section is one massive high octane, high volume dance party with a little bit of racing in between. The slogan should be, come for the party and stay for the racing. There are still tickets available for the 2023 race, and tickets for 2024 go up on sale on Monday, 25th of September. Tickets for this race do tend to sell out fast, so do not delay. The event organizers have a wide variety of options, from single day to weekend passes. A Friday general admission ticket is currently your best value for money option at 55 euros. It's 250 euros for a three day pass. And this track does have a lot of very good general admission options. The stadium section is by far the funnest part of the track to watch the cars. And sometimes you get a little bit of off-track action when somebody overcooks the corner. A three-day pass for a seat here will set you back 595 euros. The bronze stand at turn 10 is probably the best value grandstand at 375 euros for three days. If you would like to watch the start, the main straight covered section 
is probably the most expensive grandstand at 695 for a weekend pass. For those of you who are looking for more of a, an immersive weekend, F1 experiences have grandstand tickets from 1,100, which also include track tours, pit lane walks, and lots of other exclusive events. If you would like to go large, the Paddock Club tickets are about 6,600, and along with some of the finest food and drinks, they have amazing viewing spots on the main straights and overlooking turn one. And that is brilliant, but you can get even closer. For a mere 11,500 euros, you can get a McLaren package, which includes all that the Platter Club has to offer, as well as access to the McLaren garage, and you can listen to talks by both of the drivers. The other teams do offer similar packages with a range of different prices. All the VIP packages I've quoted are for three days, but there are single day options available, and these are based on 2023 prices. In terms of accommodation, there are some options in Zunfurt itself, this is a holiday town, so it's well equipped with a huge variety of different types of accommodation. There's everything from camping to high-end hotels. The NH Hotel, which is opposite the track, have rooms available for about a thousand euros a night. It should be noted that their usual room rate is less than a hundred euros a night. Amsterdam and Haarlem are two close, large cities which have a huge variety of rooms available, from 60 euros a night for a bed in a shared dormitory at the Bulldog Hostel to 2,600 a night for the ultra-luxurious Amstel Hotel. I would definitely recommend staying in Amsterdam. This is my home race. I will be traveling to the city each day by train. It's practically impossible to drive to the track, even for media. We have to park on the outskirts and then take a bus to the track. So really keep that in mind when you're planning your route to the circuit. The train service is amazing. I would thoroughly recommend that as the best option. The ticket from Amsterdam to Zandvoort on Sea is six euros 50 each way. It takes roughly 29 minutes. Then there's a short walk from the train station to the track. If you're adventurous or you're Dutch, then cycling is also a lovely option. And if you're fortunate enough to be going on one of the VIP packages, maybe that will also include door-to-door -door transfers. Do bring lots of sunscreen and get good rain gear because anything can happen during the day. A good pair of walking shoes is a must. And if you're sitting in the stadium section, definitely bring earplugs. Not so much for the cars, but for the music. Thank you so much for watching this A to Z guide to the Dutch Grand Prix. I do hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you at Zandvoort soon. All the historical photographs, unless otherwise stated, were provided by the Dutch National Archives. So massive thank you to them. If you'd like to look at any of my photographs from the previous yeah. Dutch races, there's a link in the description below. So until seeing you at Zandvoort, goodbye. <laughs>